The purpose of this video is to introduce you to an ergonomic approach called SHERPA, or Systematic Human Error Reduction and Prediction Approach. This training video will provide you with a basic understanding of this tool and how to apply it. The goals for this video are as follows. Number one, gain a basic understanding of the nine steps involved in SHERPA. Number two, recognize the pros and cons of this method. Number three, your basic understanding should allow you to know the vast number of situations Sherpa can be used in. And lastly, by the end of this video, you should be able to give Sherpa a try. Welcome to our presentation on Sherpa. We will use the Sherpa method to break down the task of trekking in Nepal. This board will track our progress as we climb through the nine steps of Sherpa. Morning, sir. Hi, I'm looking for a uh, shirt to go mountain climbing today. Let's see, uh, have you considered where you'd like to go? No, I just want to go mountain climbing. Like, it can't be that hard. So you haven't prepared at all. You just kind of wing it. Yeah, I just I wanted to go mountain climbing. I see. Well, speaking from personal experience, that is a recipe for disaster. Uh, so what I think you should do is let me be your Sherpa and guide you through Sherpa, otherwise known as Systematic Human Error Reduction and Prediction Approach. Sherpa sure, say what? Okay, I see that's very confusing because there are two different explanations for Sherpa. The first of which being a guide who will lead you on the trek or mountain climbing if you'd like to go, such as myself. And the second is a method used in ergonomics known as Sherpa, which in which you uh, break down the task at hand, you analyze all the different problems that could go wrong potentially, and then you produce solutions to every, pro every problem that you come up with. Okay, so where do we start? There are nine steps to Sherpa. Step one, HTA. Step two, task classification. Step three, identify likely errors. Step four, identify consequences. Step five, recovery. Step six, probability. Step seven, criticality. Step eight, remedial measures. And step nine, review and refine analysis. Step one, HTA. The first step of Sherpa analysis is to conduct a hierarchical task analysis, also known as an HTA, in which task performance is expressed in a hierarchy of goals. The task begins with an overall goal, which is then broken down into sub-goals and continues to proceed downward until an appropriate termination point is reached. I heard a lot of commotion, so I came out of the tent, and uh, they're carrying him down the mountain. They don't mess around. Apparently, he had bad headaches. Uh, he had bad headache at lunch, and then uh, he had uh, he vomited, and he couldn't walk. So yeah, they carried him down the mountain, and they'll take him straight to the bottom. Step two: identify types of tasks. Next, the analyst will assign each task identified in the HTA to one of five categories. The categories being action, retrieval, check, selection, and information communication. An action is a task like pressing a button or pulling a switch. In terms of mountain climbing, it could include step 2.6.2. After 3,000 meters, climb three to 400 meters per day. Climbing is an action in this case. Retrieval is getting information from a screen or manual. In our case, a retrieval step was 1.2.1, getting information from a guidebook by reading the section on climate. The next category is check, like a procedural check. In our trekking example, 2.6 was monitoring height climbed with a barometer. This clearly is a check. Next is selection. For example, choosing one alternative over another. 
In our case, 3.4.2 was choosing bottled water over alternatives. Lastly, we have information communication. This consists of talking to another party. Step 1.3.1 involves discussing past experience with one's potential guide. Step 3, come up with potential errors. Identify likely errors. For each task you have identified through HTA, determine any corresponding errors. There may be one, more than one associated error for a task. These errors will fall under the same task classification category as their associated task. For example, an action task will have an action error. These errors can be denoted with a letter, A for action, R for retrieval, etc., and a number for the specific error mode. Here are five examples of errors from our analysis which represent each of the task classification categories. Starting with task step 1.2.1, .1, which was Read Guidebook Section on Climate, we can see that this was identified as a retrieval task. Thus, it will have a retrieval error. The two errors we identified were neglect to read guidebook before trip or misread guidebook. The first, neglect to read guidebook before trip, can be classified as an R1 error. This means that information was not obtained. The second, misread guidebook, could be classified as R2, wrong information obtained. To select the proper external error mode, consult a Sherpa external error mode taxonomy chart. Here is a second example of identifying the errors associated with a task. This is arguably the most important part of the Sherpa analysis, so this is why we are giving a secondary example. Task 3.4.2 was choose bottled water over other types. We classified this as a selection task. Thus, the error will also be a selection error. The error could be select non-bottled water. This error is called an S2 error for error mode as S2 means wrong selection made. Once again, consult your Sherpa external error mode taxonomy chart to get these specific subtypes. Who needs bottled water when I got this nice, clean, yellow tap water? Step four, identify consequences. Consequences. In this step, the analyst must determine what would happen if the error occurred? For each error, provide a short description of the following consequence. For example, with neglecting to read guidebook before trip or misreading guidebook, the consequence would be proceed unprepared. Why didn't I know it would be this cold? I should have read the guidebook. Let's look at a second example of a consequence. For the error select non-bottled water, the consequence would be altered health status. Oh, I don't feel so good. Step 5, Analyze Potential for Recovery. This step analyzes the potential for recovery of the error. There are three notations for recovery, immediate, none, or later task step. Immediate being if the error can be recognized and recovered right away. None, if there's no potential for recovery. 
and later task step if there is a potential for resolution of the error in a later task. Here are a couple examples to further your understanding. With the error, drink too many beers, probably Waterloo Dark, or task 3.2, we have identified the recovery as task 3.3. Here we have listed the later, a later task step where recovery for this error could occur. Task 3.3 is get lots of rest, at, so at this step, the error of inebriation could be resolved by sleeping it off, and the overall task of completing the trek can continue. A second example could lie with the error, select non-bottled water, or task 3.4.2. This error has no recovery, and therefore is denoted as none for recovery. This error has no recovery because you've already consumed potentially health-altering bacteria. Step six, examine probability of occurrence. If an error has occurred many times in the past, we identify this as a high probability of occurring. Likewise, if it has occurred a moderate number of times in the past, we classify this as medium, and rarely in the past is recorded as low probability. For this step, it is important to consult a subject matter expert to find out their experience with each error in the past. For example, with the error omit to a check barometer, the probability is medium, meaning that it has occurred fairly often in the past. When we consulted our subject matter expert, Ram, a Sherpa in Nepal, we asked him what were the most common errors he saw while trekking. This was his response. What is the worst experience you have run into while trekking? Was it something to do with the weather or did you have an injury? Did you have an animal encounter? What was the worst thing? <coughs> well, it depends like, you know, uh, different, different accident happens in different regions. Mm -hmm. But mostly in the trekking, lots of people, they are, you know, uh, affected by the altitude sickness. Yeah. And also the weather, you know, weather is the big thing in the mountain. Have you ever had an avalanche or anything? Well, uh, I have seen quite a few times in my life, in trekking life, but I haven't faced, you know. But I saw avalanches in Annapurna region, especially the Everest Bay, Annapurna Base Camp. Mm -hmm. It's really a danger area because of the avalanche. Yep. And sometimes the other region has also got the avalanches, you know, when you go nearby the base camp or nearby the mountains that time, mm -hmm. it has a chance to, you know, get avalanches. Step 7. Examine criticality of error. Next, the analyst determines the criticality of the error based on a scale of low to high. If the error leads to an unresolvable consequence, such as interfering with the success of the task, it is rated as having high criticality and denoted with an exclamation mark. For example, the error of climbing over 400 meters per day is, re is rated as having a high criticality because the consequences of this error could be severe. Specifically, you may fall ill. Conversely, if the error barely affects the overall task, it is listed as having low criticality and denoted with a dash. For example, the error neglect to read the guidebook has low criticality because one could continue on the trek, health intact, under the leadership of one's guide. Step 8. Identify remedial strategies. The next and final step is for the analyst to propose error reduction strategies. In other words, these are suggested changes that can prevent errors from occurring or reduce the consequences of the errors. These suggestions usually fall under four categories, being equipment, training, procedures, and organizational. Equipment refers to modifying existing equipment or introducing new equipment. With training, it refers to adjustments to training provided. Procedures means implementing new or redesigning old procedures. And organizational refers to rework policies. In the case of our checking example, we have several different categories of remedial strategies represented. Firstly, with the ex error neglect to read guidebook before trip or misread guidebook, the remedial strategy could either be pack guidebook and sticky note climate pages, which would be an equipment change, or attend trekking training course, 
which would be a training change. I think he's going to want to read the section on climate. A second example could lie with the error of selecting non-bottled water. The remedial strategy for this error could be stock up on bottled water. This would also be an equipment change. He really doesn't want to do this. We'll try this instead. Step 9, Review and Refine Analysis. Here are the pros and cons of Sherpa. Starting with pros. Number 1, Structured and Comprehensive. Number 2, User Friendly. Number 3, Easy to Teach and Learn. Number 4, Predicts and Reduces Errors. Number 5, It's Thorough. And number 6, It's Pen and Paper Friendly. Now moving on to cons. Uh, number one, time consuming. Number two, tedious. Number three, influenced by analysts. Number four, extra work if HGA is not available. Let's review the reliability and validity of Sherpa. Reliability refers to consistency and reproduction potential of the tool. Validity refers to quality of extrapolations to real world situations. It is important to note that reliability and validity are dependent upon both the expertise of the analyst and the complexity of the task being analyzed. According to Kerwin, in Ergonomist in 1991, Sherpa was the most highly rated of five human error prediction techniques by expert users. Overall, Sherpa is an exhaustive, easy-to-use preventative tool. It is widely applicable to virtually any task. Just make sure you have the time and resources to conduct this analysis. Sherpa is a great tool because it is not only predicting errors, but also providing strategies to prevent errors from occurring before they actually happen, thereby increasing safety and decreasing the potential for injury. Congratulations! You've now finished the nine steps of Sherpa. You are now ready to hit the mountain.